The next helmet that I want to talk about here is the uh, the Swedish M26. Now, uh, this helmet is heavily influenced on, uh, in design by the previous Swedish steel helmet, which is the M21. They're very similar in shape. The main difference being the fact that the M21 has the Swedish crest on the front. And uh, that's pretty much the only difference. The shape is more or less the same. Now these helmets are also uh, have a pretty interesting shape. As you can see, uh, they're very similar in appearance to the Japanese M31 helmets of World War II. Uh, there's debate as to whether or not this is coincidence or the Japanese intentionally patterned their helmet after the Swedish ones. Personally, I think it's just coincidence, but hey. So, uh, yeah. Now these were the standard Swedish helmet from 1926 up until pretty much right up until they replaced them with Kevlar there was another helmet the M37 which became which became predominant after it was introduced in the late 30s but this was never phased out entirely and as you can see from the ins from the liner this is pretty modern looking that's because the original M26 had a three pad liner system which was pretty, uh, more or less the same as that can be found in the World War I German Stahlhelms. But uh, this, was this was replaced in the 60s with a uh, American M1 style liner. So as you can see here, it has the chin strap, which is similar to the German and Austrian style post-war M1 helmets. And, uh, yeah, this one is a size 54 to 57. It's, it's adjustable right here. And uh, it also, it's also has a stamping right here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got it's the Swedish crest with a number 69. I don't know what this means. It's not the size. I'm not sure if it's the year of manufacture or refurbishment or, or what it is, but uh, it's... 69 is stamped right here at the back of the shell. The, uh, the helmet that this uh, was intended to be replaced by also got updated in the 60s with the same liner. Um, these are, you, you, can, you, you can find uh, both versions of this helmet with the original liner from the 20s or the upgraded liner. I picked this up at a military surplus store in uh, Florida when I went there a couple of years ago. And uh, yeah, I thought it was a pretty interesting looking helmet. And I decided to pick one up. They're pretty, uh, pretty very nice and very comfortable helmets, I must say. And uh, occasionally the original ones from the 20s will have the Swedish crest painted on the side. This one doesn't, of course, but uh, yeah. These have, uh, oh yes, the chin strap. You can uh, do up the chin strap one of two ways. You can do it up here. You can click it together with the upper buckle and then push back out on it to unclip it. Or you can join it like this and then you can also pull and it will come apart. This was uh, the same feature as found on German and Austrian M1 helmets. But uh, this feature was intended so that if you, if your helmet gets hit with enough force, then rather than your helmet taking your head off with it, this would come undone from the force and the helmet would come off your head. I'm not sure how effective this was, but that was the idea behind it, so I've heard. But uh, yeah, these are secured with six rivets going around the side. And uh, aside from that, it's pretty simple. It's just more or less a Swedish M26 helmet with an American style M1 style liner system. Yep, that's it. The, my next helmet I'll cover will most likely be the Hungarian M90. So uh, thanks for watching and subscribe and like and all that jazz. See you later.